And another one of your high profile uh, films also deals with the, one of the other primary main female rappers of all time, which was Queen Latifah appearing in Hoodlum. Mm -hmm. And that takes it back a bit. So with her and with Lauryn Hill, they're both extremely talented and acclaimed singers and actors, mm -hmm. actresses. So with Queen Latifah, like with Lauryn Hill, you, you worked with her early on in her film career. So what did you see from her interaction with the Lawrence Fishburns and, and the other big actors, you know, the Tim Ross, et cetera, that were also in Hoodlum? What did you see with Queen Latifah that was memorable or noteworthy as you look back? Uh, Queen Latifah has chops. <laughs> I mean, she she's not just a surface actress. I mean, she can go, she can go deep. Mm -hmm. Did you see her in Betsy? Yeah. Oh, she was brilliant. Absolutely. She, she brought a lot of uh, depth there as well. And I think, you know, Queen Latifah has been able to navigate these worlds and play these super serious characters, become Oscar nominated mm -hmm. for what she did mm -hmm. in Chicago, but then also show a little more of the comedic side with some of the lighter fare that she's right. done. Right. And speaking to Chops, what did you see with her versatility back then in Hoodlum that makes you understand why she's been successful today? Well, that was one of her beginning films, but um, you could see that once she could take direction, once, uh, two, she didn't just play the surface of the character. I mean, she took, it wasn't a big role, but she took the time to really dig into who that person was. So you, you knew at that time even that she was not just doing lines as a rapper, she was taking act, acting seriously. Right. And that was that was a great thing to see. Right. Now, one of the uh, main blockbuster successes that uh, you had also worked with was DMX, mm -hmm. who at one time was the biggest rapper, and then he signed a huge deal with Joe Silver, had a super successful run of uh, action films, and one of them was one that you appeared in, Exit Wounds. So with DMX, uh, I thought it was amazing that this guy had come from this gangster rapper, or hardcore rapper, I should say, that was very intense, but also had a very spiritual side to his music mm -hmm. and very emotional, and then was able to just seamlessly transform into this action hero. So by the time that you worked with him on Exit Wounds, he had done several films and had huge success. So when you're getting on the set with him, was he acting like an A-list uh, super action hero guy, or was he just acting like a rapper or acting like a normal guy? What was what was DMX like? Uh, well, I think that he rose to the occasion of the cast that he was with mm -hmm. at that time. And um, he was professional. He was on the set um, on time. I mean, he, he, he came through as a professional. And so as a result of that, you know, I think what he did speaks for itself in terms of the role. Right. And so um, he worked hard and uh, with the rest of the actors, and so he was respectful also. Right. And I think with DMX too, people don't understand the magnitude of like signing the deal with Joe Silver. So for people that are not familiar with how the film industry works, I wanted you to really explain, given your pedigree and your resume, Explain to people, what does it mean that DMX signed a deal with the producer of the magnitude of Joe Silver? Well, you're under a lot of pressure. <laughs> yes, you got to deliver. Because you got to deliver. Right. And um, you, you didn't start out as an actor. Right. But as a musician. Right. And so you're catching, you're, you're, it's on the job training to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. And so I can understand, and it's like, People come into this business thinking that it's easy to you know, get up there and say lines or whatever. No, but you're under constant pressure. You gotta be on the set at a certain time. You work 12 to 16 hour days and you gotta deliver. And so, uh, there's a lot of pressure on him. Now, how did things switch when you directed his Angel movie with DMX? I think at that time he was going through a transition. So, um, it was, it was fun working with him, mm -hmm. but I think he was doing something else at the same time. So we were, you know, with the weight a lot in terms of the set, those kinds of things. And he would apologize when he came, but things were going a couple of different projects at the same time. Yeah. And how, 
since you've often done that yourself, working on things, whether as an actor or a director, how have you been able to kind of navigate and balance, you know, switching those different hats from project to project? And sometimes when you act and direct something at the same time, how have you found that you're able to kind of switch those gears yourself? My check. <laughs> so <it> helps to. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, man, it is what it is, though. It is what it is. That check helps. It helps keep you focused okay. on the straight and narrow. Damn. <laughs> Bill knows, man. Bill knows. Yes. You're my mentor, man. Come on. You took that check. Come on. Yeah, you know. Everybody's got to get it, man. Everybody's got to get it. Yeah. And speaking of big checks, somebody that's gotten several of them throughout his career is 50 Cent. And you have a pivotal role in his uh, feature mm -hmm. Feature film debut, Get Richard Die Trying, mm -hmm. which was also a tremendous blockbuster when it was released. Now, with 50 Cent, like DMX, and like a lot of the people you work with, they didn't come from an acting background. Right. And I remember when you were filming it, you had told me uh, right after it actually that he he was probably one of the more professional people you had ever dealt with. So what you've been in the business a long time and worked with hundreds, thousands of people. What what was it about 50 Cent that made it stand out to you so that when you and I were talking five, six years ago, you were like, man, this guy was so professional. He was, what, what was different about 50 Cent? Well, the rapper 50 Cent is a character. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? It's a character that he plays. But he's a businessman. And when you're on the set, that's you, who you meet, the businessman. Hmm. Um, and he doesn't only require it of himself, but you know, people around him, I think he expects them to do, you come to do the work. You're on time, you work hard, you don't leave until the work is done, there's no excuses, and let's get going and do it. Right. And that's the kind of leadership he provides. And so working with him was, it was really, I mean, you know, because he comes off like, you know, like this character in the rapping. But he, the language and, and, and uh, how he deals with business uh, on the set when he's not on camera, it's like a different person. Hmm. I mean, total businessman. Yeah, and that being said, you've just with 50 Cent, Snoop, and Dr. Dre, Queen Latifah, you've dealt with and worked with some of the biggest people in rap music history mm -hmm. and worked at them with a high level, DMX included, of course. So that being said, what have you noticed about these successful artists in rap and why they've been able to make that transition so seamlessly? I think that they're, they're brilliant in the sense that they understand the industry. Okay. Um, someone told me once, there ain't no God in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't understand that you're not gonna go up all the time, but there are certain dips that you face, you have to prepare yourself for that. And you have to be able to be multifaceted in terms of your talent. You can't just rely on music for the rest of your life or, I mean, what other things can you get involved in that maintain the longevity of your brand? Right. And so they were smart enough at an early age to understand that through their managers, agents, or whatever. But those people that understood that um, have survived right till to this day yeah I mean you know your recent work on SVU is a prime example of Ice-T coming from helping popularize and and break through gangster rap on a commercial level that he mm -hmm. did in the in the late 19 mid to late 1980s to now being on Law & Order SVU for 17 18 mm -hmm. years is mm -hmm. remarkable to be able to make that transition and all the box office success that he's had as well. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a testament to that. And uh, as you as you see the entertainment industry evolve, what do you think rappers are doing to help push film and television forward? If you look at Beyonce's last work. Right, Lemonade. Um, yes, as she is working as a black female in this industry, she realizes right now today that she wants to leverage her brand in terms of not just being in front of the camera, but behind the camera right. and, and conceptualizing uh, ideas for films and those kinds of things. Not the first time she's done it, uh, but the way that she's thinking, 
I think is very, 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 very smart. I think that the music itself is we're coming up with new people all the time. Right. And they're expressing the feelings and everything of this new generation. Um, so I'm just saying, but you know, it's, it's new, it's different, but people are adapting to the, the reality of what that really is. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, where this music is going over the next 10 to 15 years.